Today's video is called How to Become a Psychiatrist. And this video is geared towards all of you high school and college students out there who may be interested in the field of psychiatry. Hey everybody, my name is Dr. Andrew Kim. I'm a board certified psychiatrist and I've given several talks over the years at local high schools and colleges on career nights explaining the process and pathway of how to become a psychiatrist. So I figure I'd make a quick video so that you can watch this on your free time. Now, first of all, a psychiatrist is a medical doctor or physician who specializes in diagnosing and treating mental health disorders such as schizophrenia, clinical depression, bipolar disorder, addictions. Now, once you have completed high school or obtained your GED, it typically takes about 12 years to become a psychiatrist. And those 12 years are made up of four years of college, four years of medical school, and four years of something called residency. Residency is when you are technically a doctor, uh, but you are training and working under the supervision of more experienced doctors until you are ready to practice by yourself. Now, let's jump right into it. So step one, you know, after high school is really getting into college and completing your undergraduate degree. Now, when you are in college, you don't necessarily have to be in a pre-med track or major in pre-med, but you better make sure that you're completing all of the necessary classwork or course requirements for the medical schools you are applying to. In general, uh, this usually means you have to take some uh, biological sciences, chemistry, organic chemistry, um, biochemistry, physics, and English courses. Now, in addition to trying to keep up a competitive grade point average or GPA, you also want to build up your CV or resume with some extracurricular activities. Things like, you know, volunteering at your local hospital, shadowing with some doctors, uh, just doing activities that display qualities that you want to highlight, like uh, your leadership skills. Now, before you start applying uh, to medical schools, you'll also need to do step number two, which is take the MCAT exam, the MCAT, or Medical College Admissions Test. Now, the MCAT is a long seven and a half hour test that basically covers uh, the main core sciences, uh, like biology, chemistry, your critical uh, reasoning and thinking skills, and you want to score well on this, obviously, okay? You want to have a competitive score because this is the standardized test that medical schools use during the interview process, just like colleges look at your SAT and ACT scores. Now, once you've taken the MCAT, you've completed your studies and your requirements, you apply, you interview, and you try to get accepted into medical school. So that is step number three, getting into medical school. Now, usually there are two different pathways. You can go to the traditional type of medical school where at the end of the four years, you receive an MD, okay? Or a school of osteopathic medicine where at the end of the four years, you receive a DO or a doctor of osteopathy. Either way, in general, during medical school, the first two years are very book heavy. You will be having your nose in the books and being in the labs, okay? The anatomy lab, working on cadavers, learning about the human body. Uh, the microbiology lab, looking under microscopes and learning about cells and bacteria. After those first two very book heavy years, the last two years of medical school are typically uh, done with clinical training. Um, and you will do things called rotations. Rotations are when you and other medical students are following and shadowing doctors in a specific area of medicine so you can learn how to diagnose and treat patients in that specific field. So you will get to see a bit of each area of medicine, primary care, OBGYN, psychiatry, general surgery. So this gives you a wide breadth of experience and helps you decide what are the next steps. 
Now, during the course of medical school, you will have to take more standardized tests. You will have to take two sets of tests called the USMLE, the United States Medical Licensing Exam. And there's a step one and a step two. So there's two sets of exams you have to take during medical school. And again, these serve as standardized tests to show residency programs your scores, okay? So in your final year of medical school, you are now applying to residency programs. And residency programs are basically uh, programs uh, that have to do with the specific field of medicine you wanna go into. So for us, we're talking about psychiatry. So you apply, you interview, and hopefully match into or get accepted into a residency program, okay? A psychiatry residency program is four years long typically. So technically, by the time you reach residency, you are a doctor, you are an MD or a DO, but you are not yet ready to practice on your own. During residency, you will see patients, you are diagnosing patients, treating patients, taking care of patients, but with the supervision of more experienced doctors, okay? So the first year of residency is usually called intern year, where for the most part, you're actually learning about general medicine rather than psychiatry. So you are working in a hospital, uh, treating patients who have heart disease, diabetes, who are in the intensive care unit. So you are building a foundation of general medicine. Then in the last three years, you are focused mainly on psychiatry and you will get, again, a wide scope of experience working in the hospital setting, in a locked psychiatric ward, in a clinic setting, uh, in a detox unit where you are helping people detox off of alcohol and heroin. You are learning how to prescribe medications. You are uh, learning how to provide different types of therapies. And by the end of residency, you are pretty much independent. And for the most part, you're seeing patients on your own and just kind of touching base with your supervisors periodically, okay? Now, during the course of residency, you will also have to take one final exam uh, called the USMLE Step 3. You take that after your first year of residency and you have to pass that. It's a two-day exam. First day is multiple choice questions. Second day is a clinical skills test. Now, you've made it to the end of residency. So you have a couple of options. You graduate and you finish, okay? Or you do something called a fellowship. A fellowship is just extra training that's optional if you wanna specialize in a particular area of psychiatry, like child and adolescent psychiatry, or forensic psychiatry, which has to deal with the crossroads of psychiatry and the law, okay? You don't have to do that, but either you finish residency or you do more training and you finish your fellowship, and then the final, the final step is you take your board certification exam. It's just, it's a multiple choice test, and when you pass it, because you will pass it, uh, you will be board certified. So you are now a board certified psychiatrist and you have made it. Now, the wonderful part before you start practicing is that you have a lot of options. That is the nice part about becoming a psychiatrist. You have the flexibility to pretty much work in any type of setting. You can work in a traditional hospital, you can work in your own private office and see patients in an office setting. You can work from home doing telehealth over the internet. Uh, you can work in clinical research like myself. So there are many options. Now, how much does a psychiatrist make? Now, I know people don't like talking about money for some reason, but it's important to know what your earning potential can be when you go into a specific field. Now, from surveys last year, uh, they said the average psychiatrist in the United States made about $220,000. Now look, it's a wide range. I have coworkers or colleagues who work at an academic hospital that may be making $170,000 a year. I have other colleagues who are very entrepreneurial and very ambitious and they're making over half a million dollars a year. So even when it comes to your earning potential, it really depends on you and what you want for a work-life balance, but you will be well compensated. 
Now, the bottom line is the learning never stops. So even after you are practicing as a fully fledged board certified psychiatrist, every 10 years, you will need to get recertified. Depending on the state you live in, every state has different requirements of how many hours per year. You also have to obtain continuing medical education credits, which is basically, you know, reading articles, attending lectures, but you have to do a certain amount per year as well. Because look, you want to be on top of the latest developments in the field of psychiatry. You want to know what's going on with new therapies, uh, with new treatments, so you can provide the best care possible for your patients. So look, I hope that you found this helpful. Obviously, we didn't go into every detail, but this is the general path of how you get to becoming a psychiatrist after high school. Now, if you like this video, please share, please like, please subscribe and turn on your notifications because in a couple weeks, we will do a live stream session specifically for students like yourself where I will give you the opportunity to ask questions or you want me to go into more detail about certain things, ask questions or talk about things I didn't touch on to be helpful to you. So keep that in mind, subscribe, and I will notify you soon when we are going to do that student live stream. This is Dr. Andrew Kim. I hope that you found this helpful. Good luck on all your career choices and all of your studies. Until next time, signing off.